Namaste friends, welcome to Yoga Bliss with Shelly and I am Shelly. Today's practice is inspired on speaking our truth. So it feels innate, I'm dressed in blue, the color of the throat chakra, to dedicate today's practice all around the throat chakra, this incredible space, which is also the neck, it's a space that holds up so much. My friends, know that this practice is not here just to say, if I practice this, my throat chakra will miraculously open. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. If you're open to it, set the intention, maybe some miracles will unfold. So my friends, grab yourself a cozy couch pillow, a blanket. If you are a block person, I think it's always good to have all the things, the, all the support that we can so we can help ourselves. Grab your mat, my friends, unroll your mat, unpeel the edges, and together, let us do this and deepen at our throat chakra. Welcome, my friends. Join me in your favorite crisscross applesauce, that sukhasana, the easy pose that isn't so easy. If you have yourself the pillow or the blanket, I would grab those and just get those underneath of your sit bones. I like to kind of sit like I'm on a ledge. So situate, get wiggly. I know I always get real wiggly before a yoga class. It's just like, oh, like the last minute jitters and the thing. So get wiggly, wiggle in your seat. If you've got a bigger booty, I've got some, some meaty booty, move that meaty part of the booty away and try to just settle into your sit bones and almost like you're tipping forward and just find your seat. Without judgment, just find your seat and where you are in your body here. And as we just get those little wiggles out, just give yourself a little gratitude as maybe you can Blink the eyelashes close or find a drishti, a little visual point, something to gaze at. If you have a, a plant, plants are awesome. You can also gaze at my plant or I have these lovely little murtis up here. So find something to focus on or maybe it would be better for you not to focus on the screen as much, but focus on, on your environment and you. So as you bring that awareness, my friends, just allow yourself to... Just notice how your breath is. Notice if it's going slow. Notice if it's quickening. And allow yourself to find length in the spine from the sit bones, just almost like imagining a zipper, an invisible zipper zipping all the way up through the front body, the pelvic wall, the front of the navel, all the way up, zipping up and connecting each vertebrae all, bray, all the way up to the chin, humbly tucking the chin towards the chest, all the way to the top of the head, drawing a little length on the top of the head. And you can almost imagine if there's like a string or maybe like a little puppeteer thing just pulling and just inching you up, just growing that energetic spine. That's this incredible spine is, is where our energy is located on. And uh, some people practice kundalini yoga, which is just summoning the power of the energy and inviting it up the spine, which whether or not you are aware of this or not, I know some people have fear of kundalini energy. It's just, it's all the same. That's just a name. It's, we all have energy. This is quantum physics. It's the work of Albert Einstein. It is that everything is composed of energy. So energy is everywhere and it innately flows to and through us, my friends. So as you gently just bringing your hands up and in, in creating your Anjali Mudra, which is just palms kissing palms, wide open starfish hands, and just bring that right in front of that throat space, in front of the throat chakra, as today's practice is dedicated to invite us to speak our truth, to, to energetically let go of what is no longer serving us in this, in this wonderful space. And my friends, I invite you to Close your eyes if you haven't already and bring a breath in through the back of the throat and allow it to release out of the back of the throat. And obviously the breath has to come into the body, but really bring that focus on feeling the movement of breath down that throat space. 
and letting it go and just noticing if it's feeling tight or uneasy or maybe your neck is feeling a little wonky that cervical vertebrae that does so much and holds our heads up all day this incredible incredible space and I invite you to imagine a color of blue and whatever blue that resonates with you and invite that color into your throat space, into that throat chakra and just giving permission for the color of blue to just penetrate within that throat center, my friends. Beautiful work as you bring a breath in and letting that go. And as our Hands are here in our prayer, our Anjali Mudra in front of our throat chakra, gently tucking the chin and setting an intention for your practice today and allowing yourself to grab onto the first thing that comes. And if nothing's coming, you could invite that intention of opening, expanding at the throat chakra. Just open, open, open. And maybe even your mantra today could be open, open, open. Gently exhaling the hands down, my friends. And from here, you can keep the hands planted on the earth or planted on the top of the knees. Tune into your feet and know that this is your practice. And wherever you are in your body is, is okay. You don't need to do exactly what I'm doing. So you could take a Baha Konasana, a butterfly, if that feels good. Or you can stay in that crisscross applesauce. And my friends, I invite you to turn on some, some jams, some music or some yoga vibes. I love to listen to yoga flutes or healing frequencies. You could even Google throat chakra frequencies to ante up and, and make this a little bit more of a powerful practice. Or if you like hip hop or whatever your jam, folk music, turn that on and, and add it to this practice to make it a little bit more inviting. So here, my friends, draw that length up from the spine and just tune into how your hamstrings are. I know I have really tight hamstrings, so my knees do do this big, I have this generous gap here, six to what, eight inches off of the floor. So if that feels good for you, that's great. You can drive those heels in towards the pelvic wall, or if it feels better, if it's feeling really, really tight and uncomfortable, really pushing the feet away from you, you can also use extra support in the knees if you have a block or a pillow, and you can give yourself that extra support. I'm all about the support and, and helping our bodies tune into alignment. It's all about proper alignment. And from here, my friends, envisioning that the tip of your nose has like a pen or a marker and just small, drawing a small spiral. So, you know, a spiral, it's gonna start small. And you can go, you'll be counterclockwise, I'm clockwise, so I'm mirroring you, right? I have this amazing talent to mirror which is like switching my brain and allowing that spiral to grow and really bringing that awareness into the neck. So mindfully bringing the awareness. And if you would like, you can put a hand on the throat or the sides of the throat. I know I did hair for 14 years and I used to have this client who had this really big fear of things being around her neck and even the cape was like suffocating to her. So however you're feeling in your throat chakra, in your throat, in your spine, and really mindfully being aware of how it's feeling as you make that spiral as big as you possibly can. And for me, even that's really tipping to this right in the back and all the way to the left. And pausing at the center and just noticing what it's feeling like in your neck. Like if it's feeling tight, it might it's feeling a little bit tight. And then going the opposite direction. So if you were clockwise, go counterclockwise. If you were, go the opposite direction. So. You know, counterclockwise is against the clock, which is gonna to be to the left, and clockwise is going to be to the right. I know my daughter uh, was recently diagnosed with dyslexia, and she always has struggled with right and left and looking at the clock, and it makes sense because it's just the way her brain works, right? So however your brain works, just go the opposite direction, carving that spiral out, and just bringing that awareness into your next space and bringing that breath in and letting it go. His yoga is the union, it's a joining of our breath, our pranayama to our life force. And it's just this important aspect of yoga. Wonderful work, my friends. And pausing here, and I have to share this with you, as you inhale from the center and exhale, allowing the 
right ear to drop to the right shoulder and opening up the throat chakra on the side. I was drinking my yummy Yogi tea, it's my favorite tea ever, and I wanted to read this too because it's like perfect for today's practice. It says, the voice of your soul is breath. So use your breath today because it's the voice of your soul. We're doing this practice on our throat chakra. Just feel how it's feeling in the neck. Try not to just crank too much. I know sometimes we can put a gentle hand, but be gentle with your neck and that throat chakra and maybe giving it just a gentle rock side at this diagonal angle. And you can also support the neck and the head here if it's feeling really heavy. My head's feeling really heavy in the throat space. Inhale, meeting me at center. Exhaling to the left, so bringing that ear towards the left shoulder blade. And if you want, you can do just a very gentle, this is not gonna be raking on that neck. If you need some support on the opposite side, you can do that and just gently rocking. Front and back. And just gently bringing that breath in, that the breath of your soul into that throat chakra. Inviting the blue bringing the, the blue, the cooling tones of blue. Blue is just such, the ocean is associated with blue, the sky, all these calming effects of blue. Exhaling, meeting me back at center, and with the chin, actually building length up through the spine. So sitting here can be like, ah, I'm doing nothing. And I noticed that my feet went back into my crisscross applesauce, and that's okay if that feels good for you. And really tune in to the body by really activating the soles of the feet together. You can turn on through the calves, activating even around the fronts and the back creases of the knees, activating through the glutes and the booty, and toning through the core and inhaling, drawing the spine back together. And you could just gently bring the hands, palms facing away. So palms will be facing, I'm off of my mat with my hands, but facing the short edges fingertips facing the short edges of the mat. And inhale for a heart opener as we, we open this heart with a gentle bend to the elbows, exhaling, allowing the chin to humbly tuck towards the upper chest here for a back throat chakra, that neck stretch here. And just opening up and just giving love. And if that's hurting, just do a little bit forward. You don't have to get so, so crazy. And again, activating still the lower body in yoga, even though we're focusing on one part of the body, we're always still using the entire body. And that's what I love about yoga. Even if it's a you know a throat chakra practice for the neck, we're still going to be engaging the rest of our body. And from here, if it feels good, maybe bob that head a little bit. Yes, just little gentles, gentle babies. And inhaling, leading me back at center, exhaling and allowing the back of the head to mindfully work up as the chin comes up in the base of the scalp, comes back towards that cervical vertebrae here. And just noticing how it's feeling, if it's feeling tight or uneasy or yucky, just notice without trying to change it. And invite that healing color of blue, invite blue into your throat. And I like to do this visualization of imagining either a foggy, hazy day or I use diffusers a lot, so our diffuser fog just billowing up and growing in my throat space with the color of blue with those healing vibrations and bringing that breath in and letting that go, my friends. Awesome work, excellent. Exhaling from here, exhaling those legs long, my friends, and wherever you are in your hamstrings, that sometimes, again, that the hamstrings can be nice and tight, like mine get a little bit tighter, but sometimes I have more mobility and flexibility. You can, if yours are tight and you're having this kind of significant gap like I have, what I like to do is put a pillow, a blanket first, nice and folded, and a pillow and get those legs over top of it. So situating yourself, you can also use a yoga block for this. But if you, if it feels good for you to not have anything, rock that out and do what feels best for you. It feels best for me today. I'm feeling a little bit more mobility today, so I'm gonna just rock out with the pillow, the blanket. So really activating through the soles of the feet. I always have really dirty feet because I love to walk barefoot. I'm not a shoe fan, so that's why my feet always look like this. No, I do not have tattoos on my feet. And yes, I was probably walking out in the streets without my shoes on. Yeah, I do that. So really activating all the way through 
the calves whoosh, scanning up to, even to the knees tune into those knees check in if your feet are trying to turn out really set the tone for your body and zip up through that midline inhaling through the center, looking up through that throat chakra, exhale, twisting to the right side, my friends. And even with this, tuning into that throat chakra and where it wants to be, does it want to look forward? Is it feeling better in that cervical vertebrae to look towards the short edge of the mat? Or are you feeling like you want something a little deeper and you can peek towards the opposite elbow, the opposite shoulder here, my friends, as we tune into that throat chakra is we're twisted in our lumbar spine. We're twisting this incredible body of ours as we bring that breath in and letting that go. Activating and opening up and giving permission for this throat chakra for us to speak our truth, my friends. And to me, speaking my truth means in moments where I feel this tightness in my throat, I know that that is a sign that I need to be speaking up for what I believe is right. And Sometimes it's hard as you inhale here from the center, exhaling that breath out, and inhaling, twisting, meeting me back at center, my friends. Inhale, flying those high five starfish onto the mudra hands up high to the sky. You can peek up with that throat chakra, giving all the permission to open up. Exhale, twisting to the left side. And from the core, my friends, really scanning up and just doing a check here in all the way up to the shoulders and that throat space. Tuning into your throat chakra, does it feel better to look straight towards the feet? Does it feel better to look towards the corner of the mat? Or does it feel better to look towards that opposite shoulder with that hand either posted up high or flat onto the earth? Always a generous, always a gentle bend to the elbows, my friends, in yoga to keep these happy and healthy joints, breathing that breath in, inviting that blue healing color into that throat space. Exhaling it out. Wonderful work, my friends. Bringing that breath into this twisted pose. Exhaling it out. From the core, twisting, meeting me back at center, my friends. Options yours here. Flipping those feet over to the side and meeting me in a tabletop position. So as we come into a tabletop position, I strongly encourage support of the knees because again, we're keeping happy, healthy joints. So from this tabletop position, my friends, really mindfully rooting the hands below the shoulders, tuning into the knees. We really wanna stack our bones over bones. So just imagine like these columns here as you tune into your feet and tune into if your feet feel better posted up or flat onto the earth, my friends. From here, exhaling, allowing the spine to round as you allow the neck to really work its way towards the tail and really mindfully just tune into your body. If you have practiced yoga for a while, just maybe notice how sometimes our mind goes on autopilot. That part of the brain is called the basal ganglia. It's the part of our brain that takes over our automated functions and sometimes we just mindlessly go through motions or you know you get in the car and you just drive and you're all of a sudden at your destination and you're like how did i even get here so really mindfully exhale allowing the navel and the spine and traveling with that neck opening that throat chakra up and really mindfully tuning into your hands and really doing your best to roll the eyes of the elbows towards the short edge of the mat tuning into that neck as we open the throat chakra in the front body. Exhaling mindfully, taking three cow and cats. So a full variation is going to be the extended spine with the chin tucked towards the tail and exhaling all the way, opening that throat chakra and allowing the tail, the chin to travel up high to the sky as you flex that spine all the way down. So taking two more. Really tuning into that throat space and inviting that healing blue color into your body. Exhaling and knowing that today, every moment we have an opportunity to speak our truth, right? And to me, speaking truth does not come from the ego. Speaking my truth comes from my heart. And we, we've got a, how well do we know ourselves? That's a good question. How well do you know yourself that you could tune in to if you are kind of getting all ego-y or if you are speaking from your heart. And just gently wagging out the tail here, my friends, 
And from here, we're going to just raise up from the core, coming up onto the knees. So just allow the body to stack over each other. And again, just tune in here. This is more of a, a seated, a knee, a kneeling down mountain, like your peaceful mountain, my friends here. As you just tune into the energy of your body and how you're feeling, maybe you have some tingling sensations, maybe you're not feeling much, just allow yourself to just give permission to feel however you're feeling. From here, my friends, the option is yours. You can leave the feet laying long. I'm gonna post mine up. So tune in and just see what feels best for you. Again, if you don't have a blanket, I strongly encourage this. And we're from here, we're gonna just sink back towards those sit bones. If, if kind of sitting back on the sit bones is challenging for you, we've got our props, right? We've got some helping hands. So tune into your body and know that yoga is not a one size fits all. On the contrary, yoga is, yoga is a unique practice that is unique to you, and that's why we're here doing this home practice. So from here, my friends, we're going to just lean forward, hinging that weight forward, and we're going to grab the back of the heels. So tune in. If you can grab the back of the heels, sometimes we need to go for the ankles, or sometimes even we need to go up towards the outsides of the calf, calves. So we're going to tune into the body as we just feel what it feels like to bring that weight forward. And just sinking back for a moment, bringing one hand up and feeling the flat spot of the top of your head here. As we're gonna come in for this little rabbit variation, I'm gonna show you the foundations and then we're gonna do a little flow with it, which is super fun to just invite some more movement and some inversion in, in our throat chakra. So feel that flat spot of the head. A lot of the times in class, I see sometimes students are going right on the top of the forehead Proper alignment is going to be to find that flat spot. So grabbing the back of the heels, if that feels good for you, we're just hinging forward and bringing the very top of the head underneath of the body. And we're tucking and tuning to the feet. My feet were just pointing in. So really align those feet, even tone through the core here and breathing the breath into this rabbit's pose, my friends, and allowing yourself just to peek around you and just see this different perspective. Feel how it feels in your throat chakra. Just notice how it feels in your spine and your cervical vertebrae, which is the upper spine. And even scan down to the lumbar and all the way down to the thoracic spine, just feeling what it feels like within the spine, my friends. And from here, we're just gonna slowly unhinge up and bring that body up. So, whoo. And just feel how it feels. I know sometimes it can invite some feelings of, of lightheadedness or dizziness and know that that is part of these inverted poses and that that's okay. We don't need to panic and think we're passing out. But sometimes if that is how you're feeling, really listen to yourself and take a seat or lay flat on your back. And knowing that this practice with any practice, listen to your body and if this pose isn't feeling great for you, then you can just take like a child's pose. You can just open up the knees and sink the hips forward. So we're gonna do a little fun variation that I like to do. We're gonna inhale, raising up high, spanning the arms, the wings out wide. And we're gonna just exhale, hinging forward at the heart and coming to the top of the head and bringing the hands. You can either option to fly the arms back behind you, palms facing up high to the sky, or bring palms, kissing palms, interlacing the fingers together, and really through here, my friends, opening up through that heart chakra as we sink the heart towards the upper thighs and squeezing the back of the shoulder blades together, almost like there's a feather or a pencil or a straw that we're squeezing together as we bring the breath into that back body. And letting it go, bringing that breath into that throat center and letting it go, my friends, inviting this incredible color of blue, the healing, soothing, cooling color of blue, and maybe you can imagine a wave washing over your body and, and encompassing and swirling around your throat space and inviting that throat center and allowing yourself to speak your truth today and be honest with yourself and honest with the people around you because the truth shall set you free. I, I really believe this thing. And big breath here. And slowly and mindfully exhaling those arms. You can fly them back. You can test your center of gravity and lift up. You can also come to that tabletop position. And just notice how you're feeling here. And meeting me in this tabletop position, my friends. So 
This looks different for everyone. It's not a one size fits all. We're gonna toes, touching big toes. Some people like to keep the knees right underneath of, of the hips and sink all the way back for a child's pose or a devotional's pose. Um, Bakhtasana or Balasana. Or I like to open my knees up super duper wide. We have this pillow here, right? Because sometimes our, it's really hard to get back. I know my husband, he, this is how he does his, and this is totally fine. Do it how it works for you. You can sink the heart all the way towards the earth. You can rest the forehead onto the earth. So just tune in to how it feels best for you. You can lay the arms long for that bhaktasana, or if you would like a balasana, or if a child's pose, my friend, allow the arms to tuck behind you here. And just rubbing that forehead, putting the forehead on the mat, and just slowly rubbing it side to side, just allowing yourself permission to just awaken a little bit here, even at this third eye. This is our next energy center that, that goes up from the throat chakra, but all of our chakras are linked together, my friends. They're our, our, inner, our inner rainbow. That's why we see rainbows and we get so connected to them because we energetically have all of these beautiful colors available within us. Allowing yourself just to notice how you're feeling in your throat space. And just taking a moment here and giving gratitude for your throats, giving gratitude for all the words spoken, giving gratitude for the tone of your voice, giving gratitude for the breath that is allowed to flow freely back and forth through the throat center, giving gratitude for all the food that we've chewed and swallowed, giving gratitude for this incredible space that we often take for granted, this incredible throat space that does so much for us. And just noticing how it's feeling in your throat center. And repeating our mantra, open, open, open. You could even repeat after me, within or without, with or on the exterior through your lips. Today, I choose to speak my truth. Today, I choose to speak my truth through my heart center. And really tuning into what that means for you and coming back to that intention and really awakening that intention. And today, tuning into if we're speaking through our hearts or we're speaking through our head, right? Which I know sometimes we've got to speak through our head, right? Say we're doing like a mathematical equation, then yeah, we need to use our head. But in our relationships is more as what I was, can, I was feeling is that how we converse with people that we love or people we work with or people strangers on the street, how is it we're communicating with people? And whether or not if people are blind or deaf, how we communicate is linked to our throat chakra. So knowing that if you're having issues, I know I used to have a hypoactive thyroid, that long story short, I ended up self-healing with diet, exercise, affirmations, yoga, all of the above, positive thoughts, monitored, by a physician, of course, and I was able to get off of my, my Synthroid, which is, I learned, is the number three most prescribed drug in America. Pretty crazy. And it's just, to me, it's just, there's a lack of communication in our country. So that's why there's so many thyroid issues, because a lot of us have a fear of speaking our own truth, right? From here, my friends, slowly bringing one hand to the earth and the opposite hand to the earth and raising up after that little nap that felt wonderful. And exhaling, swinging those feet around the side body. Woo, and just giving yourself a moment to, woo, just feel that energy, to feel however you're feeling. And you can keep that blankie with you and just bringing that blankie along the back body. We have this pillow, so if a pillow sounds yummy to you, use that for your neck. So from the core, we're just releasing the palms, soles of our feet to the earth. And you can just use your knees as a helping hand as you slowly guide yourself. And sometimes you can creep to the back of the leg and help yourself mindfully rest on the earth. 
and feel how it feels on a pillow if that feels good my ponytails in the way so I'm gonna take that out if you have a ponytail or hair getting in the way get that out of there and then feel how it feels with just the head on the earth so just notice how it feels to me that pillow feels really nice so I'm gonna keep that under my neck my friends and from here, we're gonna just bring the knees up high towards the chest and just give ourselves a nice hug, just honoring and acknowledging all that we've done, giving us gratitude for showing up here, giving gratitude to our incredible throat space who does so much. And we're just, we're giving it love because this is self-love, this is self-care, this practice, my friends. And you could just slowly make circles with your knees. You can hug them, massaging your lower back on the earth. You can go side to side, front and back, big breath here. You can inhale, hugging up, contracting that throat chakra, contracting and drawing energy up through the bottoms of the feet, big breath here. Exhaling that out and slowly and mindfully, allowing one leg to lay long, allowing the opposite leg to lay long, resting the palms up high to the sky. Or if you would like, you can just gently bring the hands just like a couple inches away from the throat and just giving a little bit of your your good vibes you're in my daughter's school when people do good things i don't know what they call it but it's so cute they go ah, and it's like they're sending them love through their hands so we can maybe envision our hands are linked to our heart to our loving center and our hands are sending all this love and these good vibes to this throat chakra and without expectation that we expect our throat chakra to be healed or fixed or miraculously like this allowing us permission to accept where we are in our throat chakra and to just send love and be be here and be mindful of the words that we're speaking the words that we're thinking and the words that are coming out and being mindful of how we're communicating with everyone around us from the children in our life to our spouses to our family our friends our co-workers to people at the grocery store people at restaurants, doctors, all things, teachers, and just allowing ourselves permission to speak our truth from our heart center and just checking in and noticing in moments where we're speaking from our ego, speaking from our head, and knowing that we do have to find this balance. It's this balance of the head and the heart, my friends. And taking in a big loving breath into this throat center and breathing it out. And just like if you can imagine a blue light, choof, almost like the sun or the moon is shining a spotlight down on the throat chakra and it's just highlighting the throat and it's just giving so much love and so much light and so much compassion for here. And in this moment, my friends, just allowing ourselves to come back to that intention come back to that mantra of open, open, open with love and willingness. We can be open to experiencing new things, my friends. Wonderful work, big breath in through that throat center and letting that go. And just bringing those palms, kissing palms back in that Anjali Mudra and just honoring the good and all of the wonderful magnificence that is you. And giving yourself a humble namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me, my beautiful friends. And today on your journey, I encourage you to speak your truth and really bring love and awareness in how you're communicating in your life and your relationships. I love you so much and I will see you very soon. Namaste.